1999, or actually it was probably in 1998, so a long time ago, more than 20 years ago, I happened to be sitting on a committee meeting at the British Academy and it became obvious that they were going to start a project or a fund to support the arts and humanities, which was something quite new because although there's a lot of support for the sciences, uh, it was very difficult to get big grants for the arts and humanities. I mean, big enough to employ research assistants, have a big budget for research, this sort of thing. You could get a small individual grant, but not a big one. Mm -hmm. So I happened to be there and I thought, right, well, this is a good opportunity to apply for a big, serious money. And uh, I also thought that the first year is going to be the best because they won't know what to do and a lot of people won't know so much about the opportunity and so you want to get in right at the beginning. So then it was a case of thinking of something really big in Persian studies. Of course, I was uh, already um, a lecturer in Persian at Cambridge at that time. And um, well, of course, partly discussing with other people, it was obvious Shahnameh was the one big thing in Persian. I mean, because there's so many aspects to it. It's a beautiful poem. It's part of Iran's ancient history. Uh, you have all these beautiful illustrated manuscripts. So it seemed to be a project that incorporated many different possibilities. It's not just studying the poem, but the manuscripts and the whole context in which it was written and then the manuscripts were made. So that was it. So uh, I put in a project proposal uh, with a colleague from Edinburgh, Robert Hillenbrand, and uh, we got the money. So that was how it started. So uh, this was a five-year project, uh, and it was for a half a million pounds, roughly, which in those days was, you know, over 20 years ago, this was a massive thing. Yeah. And it was how I could employ research assistants and have a budget for traveling and paying for photographs and so on. And so Feruza joined the project quite soon after that uh, as a research associate or a researcher and uh, was able to start um, cataloguing the manuscripts in St. Petersburg, for instance, which as she, as she mentioned, she was um, at St. Petersburg at the time, and then more recently after that in America. And so several different people were sent out, someone working in Germany, some in France, I was obviously working myself, uh, to collect this the database for the Shahnameh project. So it's now over 20 years old. I mean, why is it still, worth reading and why is this important? I mean, not just because it's a sort of symbol of person language and all, all these things, but I mean, because it is still relevant to today. I mean, not because the kings are the same or all the rest of it, but just all the issues it raises, you know, it's a very, it's a sort of blueprint for human behavior. As Faruza said, there's everything there. It's, it's timeless. I mean, that's the point. It's, a, it's of course, it's beautiful poetry. But it, it isn't something that's no longer relevant. You just study as an antique sort of thing. Uh, it's got uh, something to say about most things and human behavior. Universal values. Yeah. And of course, it's modern artists. This is one of Feruza's great uh, interests now is uh, showing how um, it's still you know, the themes and even the imagery and the iconography of the uh, manuscript paintings, and um, they're adopted by modern artists, you know, they still refer to themes and elements of the style. And the Who theme. is your favourite um, character in Shahnameh or your favourite story if it's different? I know I, I, I'm supposed to say Rostam because he's the main character, he's a national hero. He used to be, and <laughs> and still now, because he, um, it's the easiest image to use. But um, mm, to me personally, I I would prefer the story of Bijan Manijé. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, this is, um, I think we we use this um, story together when this first book on the Shahnameh studies was published. And we have this article about the Bijan Manijer with Charles. Now, if someone wants to start reading Shahnameh, how would you recommend they go out about it? Well, uh, 
the, uh, well, you could start at the beginning. You could start anywhere because the stories aren't really linked. But um, the, uh, I think one of, uh, I mean, everyone knows which are the most dramatic stories. Of course, uh, Rustam and Sohrab is a very dramatic story. I think uh, the story of C.R. Bush is perhaps, um, well, it's more psychologically interesting. And it, identity. Yes, and, and it's also probably more sort of relevant if you, you know, you have to say relevant to what, but um, uh, I think in terms of the uh, Iranian spirit or the Iranian mindset, I think this idea of martyrdom and of being mm -hmm. unjustly accused and fate I, I think this is more obvious in the story of uh, Siar Bush, really. Of course, the story of Rustam is all about fate and uh, mis misunderstandings and so on. But I think in the great scheme of things, uh, you know, the, the sacrifice almost, uh, Siar Bush almost sacrifices himself. Which translation do you recommend uh, they read? Or do you have well, a the, the same person, Dick Davis? I think everyone really agrees that it's. Um, in fact, that's also published by Penguin in England. Um, and this is the most complete out of all existing. And there is another version of this translation by Dick Davis with the beautiful illustrations. Pictures, yeah. And in, it's in, in three volumes. But actually, Faruza mentioned about being complete, or uh, actually there are two complete translations. Well, there may be a Russian one, I don't know. Well, the Russian is absolutely complete yes. and it's in verse. So it's sort of a heroic deed of, of the, the whole collective, yes. the whole group of translators. But there's also a complete English version published in the 1920s, I think, by uh, two Warners, uh, Warner and Warner, they were two brothers and they translated the whole thing. But of course, um, the problem with that is, um, well, there's more than one problem. I mean, one is, of course, it's a bit old fashioned now. I mean, the language is yes. a little bit dreary. Well, it's quite amusing. But <laughs> it's, it's amusing. Sort of, but uh, the other problem is, of course, that they were using the manuscript texts that were available at the time and they were they're not a modern edition. So, I mean, Dick Davis's translation, for instance, is translating the most reliable Persian version mm -hmm. uh, and the other um, uh, one is um, earlier in French by a chap called Jules Mole, M-O-H-L, who in the 1870s uh, completed a complete French translation which is in prose uh, which is also very useful but of course that's based on 19th century manuscripts and uh, in fact he did the first well, well pretty well the first edition at all so he's translating his own edition which was actually quite scientific uh, given the manuscripts at the time but yes uh, but otherwise we have edited books um, I've got this series Shahnameh studies this is the second one there's the third one come out the, and then there's the Feruza edited a beautiful book in my honor this uh, is a birthday present yeah, but it's, for, si for, for the 60th anniversary. But it's not actually uh, a book about the Shah and Army. But, but it's um, lots of fab essays about it. Yes, I think what I've mainly done, and uh, Farooza too, is uh, analyse individual stories. Uh, and this goes back to what I was saying at the beginning. I mean, the website is a source uh, rather than a study if you see what I mean. It's the raw materials that allow you to study various things. That his annual day is recognised every year and this is a cause, I hope, for um, people looking again at his work and what he means to them and to his country and to the world civilization. So fantastic that you're celebrating this and I hope it's uh, been supported very well all over Iran. Thank you. Thank you very much. Here is John. Do you have yeah. to finish? I, I think it's wonderful that even outside Iran, there are centers like yours or ours where we have people who are interested professionally and, uh, and personally in, in the Shahnama and the ideas which are mentioned in, in this great poem. Uh, thank you very much again.
Thank, thank you. you. Yes. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Lovely to see you. Thank you. Good afternoon.